done right now, God. Let it be a change, oh God, in our lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Continue, Lord, to keep us lifted up, God. Yes. And you continue, yes. oh God, to go yes. forth, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you honor. We give you praise, God. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, Evangelist Sherry Outlaw. God bless you. And I and I thank you. And devoted sisters of praise, we thank you. Um, greetings in the name of Jesus. First, honoring our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Giving him all the praise tonight. Yes. To the shepherd of our house, Pastor Brian Bryant, and to all the women of devoted sisters of praise, I welcome, I welcome you. I greet you in the name of Jesus as a special welcome to all of our speakers, to all the apostles, to all the pastors, the elders, the evangelists, the ministers, and respectable clergy that's on the line tonight, and all of our women of God. We want to thank you for being here tonight. I would like to personally thank each and every one of you for submitting yourself and unleashing all the control that you want to have control but giving all that control tonight to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Lord and Savior, that every word coming to you will be a blessing this evening. Amen. 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 Again, my name is Evangelist Antoinette Outlaw from Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries, the director of the, our women's ministry, our women auxiliary, devoted sisters of praise. It's a pleasure and a delight to see all of you virtually here. I feel humbled to be before each and every one of you as our special guests, because this is a special year for us. This is our very first woman conference that we've been planning for a couple years. <laughs> and then finally, we just put the boots down and, and asked God to continue to give us guidance. And he said, this is what we're going to do. And so we have to do what God has asked us to do. Mm -hmm. So this is our, again, our first conference. The, and it's, the title is The Power of Faith. Mm -hmm. The power of faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, just absorb that for a second. The power of faith. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We have always um, wanted to do this. And now we're able to do this. And, you know, we're doing it virtually. And, 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 and God has continued to bless us. And we feel that we have come a long way. And, and we hope that we'll be able to excite you, bless you. And, and, and show you what God has done to each and every one of us. Uh, again, the theme for the conference again is the power of faith. And we want each and every person that's on all of our social media, the social line, the newspaper line, to be able to get something from each and every woman that is speaking tonight. So we ask that, you know, feel free, feel welcome, feel comfortable. And again, we welcome you. At this time, I will be reading the Devoted Sisters of Praise um, mission in our purpose. Our mission is to provide a global celebration to Christian women and appreciate them for their contributions to Jesus Christ. Our purpose is to honor women of every age of faith, raising awareness that through collaboration, networking and outreach programs and gathering spiritual power to reach all women and recognize their achievements in all areas of life. No matter what you do, God is always with you. We have writers, we have pastors, we have sisters, we have teachers, we have counselors, we have social workers, we have entrepreneurs, we have poeters, you know, we have all kinds of women that we deal with in our life and we want to be a blessing to each and every one of them. Our statement, devoted sisters of praise are ambassadors for the word of God. We implore all women on behalf of Christ. God is making his appeal through us. We do not change the message or change the word. We deliver the message from the Bible accurately. God tells us that we have responsibilities to represent the kingdom of God. We are called to see people differently, to give of human worldly ways of others and love one another. Our scripture, for devoted sisters of praise is coming from 2 Corinthians 5 and 20. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. And it reads as this from the King James Version. Now then we are ambassadors of Christ. 
as through God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Amen, amen, amen. and amen, amen. God bless amen. each and every one of you, amen, amen. amen. At this time, we will be having our announcements coming from our own sister, Bridget Gaddy. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome to our apostles, ministers, deacons, and evangelists. Word of the Lamb Ministry is the official church without walls, feeding your faith and doubt will starve. We welcome everyone from across the United States and Puerto Rico. We also would like to welcome those of you joining us for the first time. Whether you're looking or searching for a place of worship or a church home, we are delighted you could join us tonight. And the schedule is as follows. Join us on Monday for Bible study at 7 p.m. with our elder John L. Join us Tuesday and Thursday on the prayer line at 7 p.m. where we will pray with you and for you. Join us every other Wednesday for our book club, hosted by Deaconess Anita. And on one Wednesday out of the month, the ladies and men's group meet. That's the Voted Sisters of Praise, ourselves, the Voted Sisters of Praise, hosted by Evangelist Antoinette Outlaw, and Brothers with Knowledge, hosted by Deacon Steve Chappelle. Join us Friday for an encouraging word at 7 p.m., we are currently having usually given by pastors and or evangelists or a special guest, which could be you. Join us 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. for our unity prayer, and that is daily. Join us on the first Saturday of the month at 12 p.m., and that's for First Fruit Prayer, hosted by evangelist Diane Hooks. Come and get a closer connection with God through prayers and words of encouragement. Join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. with our Little Lambs. That's our little ones. Little Lambs Bible School, hosted by Deaconess Anita. Immediately following is Sunday message at, at 11 a.m. with our own Pastor Brian Bryant. Sunday message is broadcast live on Facebook and the teleconference line. Follow us on Facebook at Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries for events and more services. We may be in a town near you. Don't forget to click the follow, like, and share button and help us spread the gospel. Send us a prayer request and we will pray with you. Send, send us a praise report and we will pray for you. Go to our website at www.wordofthelamb.org. That's www.wordofthelamb.org where you can find some exciting upcoming events we're planning for the next few months. God bless you. And I will now hand this over to our own evangelist, Lady Sunshine. Bienvenidos a Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries, la iglesia oficial sin paredes, dando la comer a su fe y no dando la comer a su duda. Bienvenidos a todos y a que todos Dios los bendiga. Están hoy con un, una, las mujeres, Ministerio de Mujeres, en esta conferencia primero, en primero del año. Gracias y bienvenidos a todos. Tenemos servicios semanalmente. Los lunes tenemos estudios bíblicos a las 7 de la noche. Los martes y jueves tenemos oración en donde oramos con usted y por ustedes a las 7 de la noche. Los miércoles tenemos un club de libros y para el libro que estamos leyendo y la hora que estamos ahí, podemos ir a nuestra página, a www.wordinlamb.org. Y también los viernes tenemos palabra de apoyo. La palabra de apoyo los viernes es a las 7 de la noche. Uno nunca sabe lo que va a suceder el viernes palabra de apoyo, pero todos estamos garantizados un buen tiempo en la palabra de Dios. Y el primer sábado de los meses a las 12 del día hasta la una de la tarde tenemos el primer fruto de oración. 
dándole a Dios el primer fruto de todo lo que tenemos que le pertenece a el Señor. También todos los domingos, aquí mismito a las 11 de la mañana, con nuestro pastor Brian, dándole la palabra de Dios a la gente de Dios a las 11 de la mañana. Y tenemos para las ovejitas más pequeñas, que son los niños y las niñas, tenemos estudios para ellos a las 10 de la mañana, que nosotros cariñosamente le llamamos las ovejitas más pequeñas. Le damos el apoyo para que usted traiga su ovejita pequeña para que aprenda de la oveja grande de Dios. Y también queremos darle una buena bendición a todos ustedes de nuestra iglesia a la iglesia de ustedes sin paredes. También queremos darle la bienvenida y queremos darle las gracias a cada uno de ustedes por su donación generosamente a nuestro ministerio. Esta noche tenemos una predicadora internacional y también ella es una autora fantástica con un montón de libros que es la risa, la medicina de Dios que nos está dando de la palabra de Dios con los libros que ella escribe. Queremos darle a usted que cuando usted done hoy, toda esa es una semilla para la predicadora de la hora. Y les damos las gracias ante manos por todo lo que ustedes hacen para seguir mandando la palabra de Dios por todo el mundo por esas comunicaciones. Gracias y bienvenido y que Dios los bendiga. At this time, we would like to inform everyone and we would like to thank each and every one of you around the globe and in Latin America and Puerto Rico for your generous donation. This evening, as we have a wonderful guest speaker, an international guest speaker, wonderful, awesome author, Pat George J. Walker. We will be sowing every seed this evening into her life on good ground. The word says that laughter is the best medicine and she is a picturistic manifestation of this blessing that is in the word of God. So we thank you and for your convenience, we have several ways that you can give. For those of you who are very techie savvy, there is a QR code just for you. And for those of you who enjoy texting, we have a text to give. Once you text, you will receive something and you have to do one additional step and then you are more than welcome to text and give. We appreciate all of your donations. We also have a PayPal button right there on your screen and at the bottom of each of our pages at wordofthelamb.org. And for those of you who would like to send your donation in this evening, you can do so at P.O. Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. Again, our address is P.O. Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. We appreciate and we would love to hear from each and every one of you. Let us know what we can do for you. Send a prayer request. We'll pray for you. You send us a praise report. We will pray for you. Let us know what God and how God is wonderfully moving in your life. And we would love to hear and read your letters out loud. We thank you once again for your generous giving. And this is going to be an exciting evening. So put your seatbelts on and get ready to bust the laugh. It's going to be a great time in God. Thank you, and we turn this over now to our own evangelist, Antoinette Outlaw. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sister Bridget, for that announcements in English. Thank you, Evangelist Lady Sunshine, for those announcements in Spanish and translating for us. You know, God continue to bless you and everything that both of you do. Now, at this time, we'll be having Sister Bridget bring us a poem of faith. Amen. Amen. God bless, you. God bless you and thank you. Tonight's selection is called Faith a Gift. And this is by a poet named Faith cannot be conjured up. Faith is freely given. Faith comes from the work of God, not from man's years striven. Sinners cannot free themselves from the curse that holds them. 
in submission to God's will, love and grace enfold them. God sent Jesus for this task. Man could not achieve it. But through a willing heart and mind, faith lets him believe it. Marvelous grace that sets man free, helps him through temptations, gives him wisdom to discern, to bring peace to the nations. But man does not acknowledge God. His goal is fame and glory. He doesn't seem to understand God's great salvation story. When trials come, when life is hard, man seeks for God's assistance, reluctantly acknowledging, I ask, but, but with resistance. I think I'm capable by myself. I have my own conclusions, but folks say I try, I should try you out. I say that's an illusion. However, if you are that wise and if you are all knowing, perhaps the problem you could solve this weight that keeps on growing. God who waits patiently for you to come before him, asks nothing in return from you except you adore him. He bears no grudge. He sends no bills. The cost was taken care of. His son was held accountable. You've nothing to despair of. The faith you cannot find yourself comes through the Holy Spirit. It's freely offered as a gift by grace, not by your merit. God has a plan reserved for you. He seeks for your compliance, together walking down life's road, a wonderful alliance. God bless you. Amen. 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 God bless you, Bridget. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to introduce to you our, um, well, she's a good friend to me. I, I, I call her mom sometimes. You know, I really appreciate everything she does. You know, she's a real close friend of the family. She is evangelist Sherry Outlaw Pastor. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you our own um, pastor, Annie Lewis from Higher Heights Praise and Deliverance Ministry out of Bloomfield, amen. Connecticut. So we can give her a, a round of amens, please. Amen. 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 Glory amen. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone, and bless the Lord. Yes, bless, bless the Lord. Yes. Amen. amen. It's good to be a part of this great celebration. Giving God all glory and all yeah. honor and all yeah. praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. really enjoyed myself tonight. <laughs> uh, to uh, Pastor Brian, I thank God for your church's great church. Yeah, and bless. to the evangelist, Internet Outlaw. Yes, amen. The sisters of Praise, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. Jesus. Word of the Lamb ministry. And to have a speaker of the evening. And to everyone, glory to God, I greet you. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. I got about five minutes and I already used one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. No, well, go ahead, Pastor Lewis. Do, do, do what you do. Do what the Lord oh, asked you to do. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> For the next four minutes, let's see what God is saying through me to you. Uh, when the um, evangelist uh, outlaw said to me, could you do a testimony? I said to myself, what am I going to say? Uh, the power of faith, a testimony of faith. And the Lord just reminded me for a moment, your whole life, it's a life of faith. Yes. My whole mm -hmm. life has yes. been a life of faith. So quickly, I began to think back for a moment how God brought me from the backside of the desert, so to speak, mm -hmm. to the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. This is where I found myself. And I thought about Moses. Mm -hmm. I can imagine him feeling alone out there nowhere way out in the desert a place where there was no words of encouragement all by yourself you know sometimes there's no words of encouragement a place where nobody 
was praying. But mm. glory to God, a perfect place to hear God yeah. and to experience elevation from the backside of the desert to the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. So there I was, I thought about myself, this testimony, there I was out in the country on a dirt road, no telephone, not even a walkie talkie, no mm. transportation except the horseback. Walking mm. through the cold, feeling half frozen, not knowing who I really was. But I knew that there was a God somewhere. Yeah. Glory yeah. To God. And yeah. God gave me the faith to see beyond the senses. Mm. See, your mind believing in things that you can see, feel, smell, figure out. But faith goes beyond senses. So mm -hmm. I, I just thank God. See, when you are walking in the power of faith, God responds to your faith. Glory to God. Uh, see, when I, I was thinking about this, I thought about blind Bartimaeus. You know, Jesus did not stop because he was yelling, hey, hey, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He stopped because he could see his faith. See, mm -hmm. when Jesus see your faith, it will cause God to stop and turn around, glory to God. So yeah. from Alabama to New York to Connecticut and to past the Pioneer Heights Prayer and Deliverance Ministry, uh, it is a testimony of faith. But time does not allow me to tell that whole sto story, you know. So I choose <laughs> to tell a testimony about my father because that took me back to those dirt roads. It took me back to the country. It took me back to the place where I knew there was a God. So mm -hmm. some years later, after I left home married with children, um, the doctors told my father that he needed an operation. This operation seemed to be very necessary. Uh, they said it was urgent. Mm -hmm. So they called me because I had the power of attorney. So my father said to me, I'm not going to take this operation. So my father was a man who prayed and talked to God. See, I learned to pray mm -hmm. when I was a little child way back. I learned to pray. I learned to call on the father because I knew that there was a God. Even when I was five years old, I remember walking through the woods all by myself saying, Lord, mm -hmm. I know you're here. So my father yeah. prayed a lot. And one day he said to me, you know, Jesus said to me, I am the man you're looking for. So I got a call from the doctors telling me to encourage my father to take this operation. So my father said, no. I said, you should take the operation. He said, no. Did I remember the power of faith? Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And how God brought me through so many dangerous things and unseen. And I said, God, if I trusted you then, mm -hmm. I'm going to trust you now. Mm -hmm. And I remember that Matthew 18 and 18, he says, two shall agree on earth touching anything they ask, mm -hmm. it shall be done. So mm -hmm. since my father said, no, I made a choice. I am going to set myself in agreement with you. We're going to come into a group. Yes. Amen. So I, the doctors call me again. So whatever my father is believing God for, I'm going to stand with him. He decided not to take the operation. So I knew that we had to depend on God. He was in his 70s at that time. I stood on faith. I put everything in the hands of God. I knew that there was a God, I keep saying, I knew it. Yes. Oh my God. So one morning, the very morning that he was scheduled for the operation, they had scheduled him for the operation and everything. He said, I'm not going, I'm not going. So what happened? The power of faith was so on me. That's why I love this here tonight, because it's talking about 
faith. We know the word of God tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the mm -hmm. evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see this, but I know God is going to work this thing out. Mm -hmm. So come the morning that he was scheduled to take the operation. Instead of being in the hospital, he decided to go and sat on the porch. You know, old house is down south on the porch, you know. And, you know, we pray, we believe God, we trusted in you, God, your mm -hmm. word said mm -hmm. that you was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my nicotine, chastisement of my peace was upon me. By your stripes, I'm healed. Not only that, God, you said, I'm more than a conqueror, God. You said, I am the Lord that healeth thee, and all those things was going on. So while he was sitting there with his mind made up, suddenly, how many of you know God show up sudden? Yes. Suddenly, the power, the power of God yes. in him, the Lord touched his body, and at that very moment, he was healed, glory mm. to God. Oh, my God, you talking about the power of faith? Yes. That's why we all say tonight, the power of faith, I know what it is to stand on God's word and to walk by faith, glory to God. Yes. I tell yes. you, sometimes we talk about faith and we say, uh, I'm walking by faith. But I'm going to tell you, the product of faith is a testimony that it produces. Glory to God. So when you walk in by faith, it's going to produce a testimony. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, my five minutes is up. I know they are both. <laughs> God bless you all. Hallelujah. But I just want to encourage you to, when you say that you believe God, get the word of God. Stand on the word of God. That's all you can do. Yes. It's not in your hands anymore. It's in the hands of the Lord. God bless all of you tonight. <laughs> Thank you. I gotta stop because my neck. My neck is like, like I said, you know, we're, oh, we're, we're letting go and, 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 and releasing that control and giving it to the Lord. <laughs> <Pastor Lord. laughs> because I tell you, I I just praise the Lord. You know, um, faith is just a thing that I love to talk about. Mm. I love to talk about because it is the Word of God. Because God. Will honor his word. And sometimes yeah. folks say, Well, I pray, I pray. But see, God is looking for your faith. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. wants to see yes. your faith. Yes. When yes. I yes. see yes. your faith, God will turn around. What yes. happened to the one with the issue of blood? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said, Who touched me? He didn't have to see her. But guess when he saw her faith? Mm -hmm. That's your faith has made you whole. Mm -hmm. Your faith. And our faith will make us whole. Lord, mm -hmm. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Lewis. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Our next um, speaker is Sister Carolyn Beltry. She's a good friend of mine, a good friend Amen. of ministries. And whatnot, um, I, I love her to death. She's like another uh, sister to me. We we work together, and 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 this is a powerful woman of, of faith. I mean, she she posted so many things on Facebook that really touched a lot of us and, and, and myself. And I just I really appreciate everything that she has done thus far that she will continue <laughs> to do. And at this time, I bring you Sister Carolyn Beltry from Abundant Floyd Ministries out of Meriden, Connecticut. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you, Evangelist Outlaw. Thank you, Worldwide Ministries, World of the Lamb, Worldwide Ministries. Thank you so much for having me. Um, five minutes is just not a lot of time. But, I, I, but you know, the Lord have his way. I know, you know, and... I have to start with this morning when I was headed to work, it was, and I don't know where everybody is, but here in Connecticut, it was extremely foggy, very thick with fog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I left the house about 6 a.m. And I'm like, it's, it's daylight, but it's very foggy and I'm driving and it's getting thicker. And so I slow down 
And then I start thinking of the times that I was in a place of a fog. And so I had to keep going without knowing where it was leading me. And even though I knew my way to work today, it was still very nerve wracking driving in this thick fog. But I said to myself, I said, you have to get to work. You're not going to just stay home with the fog. And not, not that I was scared, but it just made me reflect on the fact that in my times of fog, in my times of darkness, all I did was hold on to him. I questioned mm-hmm. because I was going through so much. I was going through illnesses, losing my mom and 17 days later, losing my brother and taking him off life support on her birthday. So in 17 days, I lose my core. They're my family. And a year to the day, I lose custody of my daughter. A month before I lost my job of 15 years, I was laid off. And about nine months later, I was homeless, living out of my car with my boyfriend and in a domestic violence relationship. How did I get there? I remember asking myself that when I got to the domestic violence shelter in Meriden. And I couldn't believe I was there. I'm like, this is, this was never going to be me. That's not me. I was never going to go from being on top of the mountain and driving the nice car, having the nice place, making a lot of money to being in a domestic violence shelter. So in a, like a couple of days passed by and I said, you know what, Lord, I've tried doing it my way and it hasn't worked. So I'm going to do it your way. Wherever you tell me to go, I'm going. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Even if I don't understand, I'm going. Bless the Lord. Bless her. Hallelujah. That day changed everything for me. Everything for me. Was it challenging? Absolutely. Because the enemy is going to attack you when he knows he can't get you. Mm -hmm. So. He's going to go on the attack. So there were diversions and there were distractions. And I said, nope, it's not going to serve me. So I kept going and I kept being diligent. And I did my part. Wherever he told me to go, I went. Mm -hmm. I went by faith, not by what I saw. Yes. By faith. And he started to move. And I started to build my relationship with him. I needed to have a relationship with him. You know, it was not be a casual affair. It couldn't be, he's the ATM and I'm going to stick my card in there and ask for what I want and then say, thank you and walk away and then come back when I need something else. That's not how it works. Mm-hmm. You need to build a relationship with him. And I started to build a beautiful relationship with him and he started to move. And I started to involve myself in, different organizations like Dress for Success. And I recall the director of programs calling me saying, you know what, Caroline, I think you've done so much within the programs we have here. And there's an amazing opportunity to be part of a women's empowerment conference. Would you like to be a part of that? And I said, yes, absolutely. Never thinking that this was also an anniversary year for them. And so the CEO decided to take all the women, which were a hundred from different parts of the United States and around the world on a four day empowerment cruise to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. I've never been on a cruise. Comically at the age of 39, I was planning my 40th birthday cruise and I had given up on having kids. I'm like, well, I guess I'm not destined to have kids. I've been married twice. Oh, well, you know, that's just the way it is. I said, I'm going to do whatever God wants me to do. And that's why, as I was planning my cruise, I find out I'm pregnant. Mm. So I'm taking my cruise 10 years later, but not before God moving. You see, I owed 
back child support because in the domestic violence relationship I was in, he was taking my money. So I couldn't pay my child support. So I had gotten an arrearage of $5,000. And in Massachusetts and in most places, if you have an arrearage of that size, you can't go anywhere. You can't have a passport. Mm -hmm. So I was flagged. So when this opportunity came and I said, you know what? I said, there's no way that I'm not going to go because God put this in my lap. God put this in my path. I'm going. He wants me to be there. <laughs> so I called the internal, no, Department of Revenue in Massachusetts. And I said, you know, I leave a message for someone and he tries to contact me and I try to contact him. And for whatever reason, my phone rings busy when he tries to call. Mm. So mm. I'll turn email. Email, I say to him, I said, you know what? I'm going to call you at this time on this day. And I call him and he says, Ms. Beltry, I've been trying to get in touch with you. He says, you've been doing such an amazing job at paying your arrearage on your child support. He's like, I'm going to take the flag off so you can get your passport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got mm. to go on that cruise. I got to go on that cruise. <laughs> and then I came back to make an impact in my community. Yes. And that same organization also helped me obtain a car because I didn't have one. I had lost it. It was repossessed. When I came here, I had nothing. I lost my storage. I lost everything. So God moved because I stayed diligent, because I kept my eyes on him, because I kept the faith even when things didn't look like they were going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the car I have, I only paid three fifty. Dress for success paid the rest. Mm. Amen. So God's moved many times. Yes. Like the day I was praying for that car, for the whole thing to come through, because of course the enemy was in it, and he wanted to sidetrack everybody, and and he was causing problems. So it, there was a miscommunication mm. regarding the car, and. On the day I received the call that I was all set with the car, I walked to Dunkin' Donuts every day at four o'clock in the morning at one of the worst areas in Meriden. And that day, there was a young man walking the opposite way. I just crossed the street and kept walking to work. I've seen people all the time. I was used to it, even at that time in the morning. But this time he was yelling. So I think I thought he was talking to someone on the phone, but he was talking to me. And when I noticed he was talking to me, I just walked faster. And what he said was, the faster you walk, the worst is going to be. Mm. I hid behind a dumpster and I prayed that he didn't come and he didn't. And that day I received the call that I got my car. Mm. Amen. Amen. I can't stop having faith in him. He mm. keeps moving in my life in so many ways and allows me to show that to other people that I just got to keep on going because yes. there's nothing yeah. better than him. When you follow him, there's just nothing better than him. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I know that was hard. Because we've been talking. I knew that was hard. Thank you, God. But you know what? You're a woman of God, and God's going to continue to bless you. And all the doors that need to be open, my sister. Mm, hallelujah. Amen. They Amen. Open. Amen. They're going to be open. Mm -hmm. yes, and the are. ones that need to be closed, mm, God is going to shut them on a permanent basis. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Won't he do it, y'all? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You know, um, we exalt the Lord at all times. And his praise will always be on all of our lips. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, um, I'd like to introduce to you um, my sister and my cousin. Her name is Deaconess Anita Chappelle. And, and we grew up together like sisters. And, and, and she's a woman of God. And I, and I love her all the pieces. And um, she will be bringing us the reading and the, the scripture reading and the bio of our special guest tonight. Deaconess Anita, um, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you hallelujah. very much. Hallelujah. Thank you. First, let me just say that um, I enjoyed both testimonies. And Carol, yes, yes. Uh, your testimony was so powerful. You keep doing what you're doing and keep the yes. faith. You know, keep Thank doing you. what you're doing and keep telling your story. It yes. encourages everybody. Keep telling yes. your story. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Now, the, um, the lady that we are here tonight, who's going to give us probably, a, 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 I know she's going to give us a good time, and we're going to laugh, and we're going to have fun, and um, we're just going to enjoy her. We're going to enjoy her. And so far, I have to say, I enjoyed everybody. I have enjoyed everybody. Yes. So let me start off with one of her favorite biblical scriptures is Psalms 37, 25. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And that was Psalms 37, 25. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, amen. Pat amen. G. O. J. Walker, and I'm going to read her bio. Pat G. O. J. Walker, Essence, national bestseller, award-winning author and comedian and speaker, Christian fiction, humor, women literature, Kensington, Dafina. Currently, she has 13 books, including anthologies with more to be released in 2022 and 2023. She is a preacher's kid. Both parents were preachers and pastors, a native New Yorker, and recently a resident of North Carolina. Pat, in addition to having a stellar 20 plus years literary career is also a recording industry veteran. She has been part of the driving force of many successful artists on the Columbia, Epic, and Def Jam labels. She was also a member of the girls group, Arlene Smith and the Chantels. Maybe he's gone on more. And well, as well as the international group Fantasy. As the creator of the hilarious and award-winning characters of the Ain't Nobody Right But Us, All Others Going to Hell Church, and her one-woman show, Sister Betty, God's Calling You, Pat is credited with creating a new genre of fiction, gospel comedy. Her entire life is dependent upon God's grace and her faith. Pastors, apostles, ministers, deacons, evangelists, guest church let's give a warm welcome for our member our honored member here tonight our guest speaker miss pat goj walker miss pat amen. goj walker hey. amen amen god bless hey. you oh, hello, god bless hello. you god bless you amen, so amen. So amen. So amen. Full. <laughs> I, 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 I don't even know where to start you know sometimes we think that we have it hard. Mm. Sometimes we get to a point where we say, God, where are you? You mm. know, we often say, or I often say, you know, God, I'm your ride or die girl. Mm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then God puts you in a position where you have to surrender and say, you know what? If you don't do it, it ain't going to be done. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you come to the knowledge that nothing is a surprise to God. Mm -hmm. It's a surprise to you, but not to him. And when I listened to, uh, I believe it is Pastor Lois, what's her name? I Pastor think. Lewis. 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 Okay, Lewis. And to the young lady that just spoke, my heart, Sister Bethany, Sister Bethany my heart was just pounding because God will give you a witness. Yes. He will give you a witness. You think that you have been in some of the most incredibly 
craziest situations. And then you find out that you had company. Mm. <laughs> and I, I, when I spoke to Sister Outlaw, I was trying to go over my life and say, Lord, you know, there's been so many issues where I had nothing left to do to hold on to but you. How do I pick and choose? You can't. Mm -hmm. Because every time you think that everything is fine, you find out, uh-uh, no, somebody didn't get the memo. Uh, the universe is acting crazy again. Lord, knock, knock, it's me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just like the teacher never speaks during the test, sometimes we have to understand that there's a process that we must go through. Mm -hmm. And the process is not only not pretty, the process can make you pull your hair out if you do not hold on mm -hmm. to God. And I often think about diamonds. How are diamonds made? They start off at a, as a dirty piece of coal in a coal mine. And then they have to be squeezed and pressured and squeezed and pressured until finally they come out and they're priceless. And when I look back over my life, I see myself as being that piece of coal. Mm -hmm. I have been squeezed. I have been pressured and squeezed. It seemed like sometimes I couldn't catch my breath before something else would happen. So I decided to share tonight just a few examples of situations that I have been in where we often say, but God. Mm. And one of my but God experiences was with my mother. Now, both my parents were pastors and preachers, but they, all, they weren't always pastors and preachers. Mm -hmm. So as a young child, I didn't see my mother from the time I was about eight, I believe, third grade, until I was out of high school. And during that time, I had been in foster care. I had been with uh, relatives. I had been molested. I had been through so many things that I became hardened. I didn't care. Whatever you said, you just said, I didn't care until one day I was in Brooklyn, New York, and I believe I was just come out of high school. I was, so I had to be about 18, 19 years old. And I was sitting in one of my uncle's apartments and I did not claim to be saved. Knew about church, knew about God, but I didn't claim salvation. But I can sit here today and tell you that I heard a voice tell me to get on the train. Now, I don't know if anybody knows about Brooklyn or how the train setup is or anything, but I had a friend of mine named Billy. I said, come on. I said, let's go ride the train. We didn't have nothing else to do. We got on the number two train on Utica Avenue mm -hmm. in Crown Heights, New York. Got on the train and as we were you know, kids, uh, young teenagers, we were laughing and playing around and whatnot. And we got to a 143rd Street and I believe it was Third Avenue. Well, there is a, a upper level to it. And as the train pulled into the station, the only way I can explain it is I felt a push and something pushed me out the door. And when it pushed me out the door, Billy was still left on the train. So I'm signaling to him, go up and come back around. I'll stay here and meet you. But I couldn't stay there. Instead, the next train came, I got on it. And when I got to 175th Street and 3rd Avenue, the same force pushed me off that train. Now, the only way that I could kept up with him again was to go downstairs, come up on the other side and meet him at a place called, at a station called Gun Hill Road in the Bronx. So I go down the stairs and I am someplace I have never been before, but there's a building by itself 
And I'll never forget the address of the building, 505 East 175th Street and 3rd Avenue. Now, I don't know how to explain it. I've never been able to explain it, but I was not myself. And something just took control of me. And I went into that building, not knowing why I was going into the building, but had to go into that building. And I got on the elevator and went up to the last floor, which was the sixth floor. And when I got off, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, I Jesus. got off that elevator. Mm. It was a door, <clears throat> excuse me, two doors side by side. And I just started knocking on the door. And I heard a woman's voice say, who is it? And all I could say was Pat. Mm. And when the woman opened the door, it was my mother. Mm. I, had, I had not seen since mm. I was eight years old. Oh my goodness. That That's same crazy. woman told me, my mother, that she had laid before the altar at, at the Garden of Prayer Tabernacle, pastored by the Bishop Billy Robinson for seven years, looking for me. Now, and if that wasn't strange enough, mm -hmm. before I left Brooklyn, I had gone to a Sears Roebuck store on Beverly Road, and I picked out some uh, dinnerware. I just wanted some dinnerware set to give to my uncle. I put $5 on it for layaway. Two days after arriving at my mother's apartment, we go out by the elevator and there's a box laying by the elevator. It was a box from Sears Roebuck on Beverly Road with that same China silk dinnerware that I bought and it had marked on there paid in full. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm. Paid in full. Mm. So mm. now I stay with my mother. We reconnect. By this time, she was uh, she was pastoring. I'm sorry, not pastoring. She was an evangelist, mm -hmm. and I went to church with her. And it was a church of God in Christ. So I was sitting in the back, and I'm watching all these people shouting and whatnot. And I'm saying to myself, oh, Lord, please don't let my mother start shouting. Please don't let her start shouting because I'm going to be so embarrassed. I'm going to be so embarrassed. <laughs> well, the next thing I knew, I don't know how it happened. I was at the front of the church shopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I began to tarry for the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit told me that when I received the Holy Ghost, my mother would witness it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. two weeks later, still going to church. On a Wednesday night, <clears throat> my mother did not come with us to church. I started speaking in tongues. It scared me because my idea of speaking in tongues was, okay, you know, you knocked out, don't nobody, you don't know nothing, you don't know nobody, you know, just you and God, whatever. I heard everything in that church. I heard the people talking. I heard the pastor praying, but it mm. felt like something was in the pit of my stomach. And I tried to suppress, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I tried to suppress the words and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I started speaking in tongues, but my mother wasn't there. And I know that God had told me that when I received the Holy Ghost, she would be there. Well, the next thing I know, there are a couple of people from the church who took me home, they take me home. And as I'm coming through the door, as my mother opened the door and I'm coming through it, I've spoken tongues again. Mm. And that was the beginning of my journey with my mother. Mm. Now, if that wasn't, <laughs> I don't wanna say crazy, the crazy face, mm. it got worse <laughs> or better depending on how you look at it. <laughs> so now I am 19 and I decide that you know I can do what I want to do you know how we are it don't matter if you save or not you think you're grown I did not want to give my mother $20 a week to stay in her place 
Uh, so I decided I'm gonna get my own. Forgetting that it did not come with her washing my clothes, <laughs> feeding me, you know, doing all those things. And I had a room instead of an apartment. That didn't last and I ended up not having any place to stay. So I had a friend that lived in Harlem and I didn't know her that well, but she was still my friend. She says, come and go to church with me. So I go to church with her. And it never occurred to me why all these people still dressed, you know, they're all dressed in white. They had little white crowns on the head. Uh, they, uh, you had to glean as they call it, stand out on the corner, you know, ask for money, donations or whatever. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a cult. Mm. So here I am, 19, and I, I wanted a boyfriend. Why not? I was 19. I thought I was cute. Nobody told me I wasn't. So <laughs> what I didn't know was that this church picked out who you were supposed to marry. Mm. So I'm sitting there, and I kind of like this guy named Clifford. But the next thing I know, Clifford is sent to uh, Maryland to marry somebody else. Still didn't, still didn't catch on. Mm. So a, a guy in a uniform, nice looking and whatnot, come to church one night. And I'm told that this is the man that God says I'm supposed to marry. By that time, I was devoted. If they said, you know, go jump off a building, I'm thinking, okay, well, if they say jump off a guild, building, God's going to catch me. I knew him for three days before they married us. Was not married in a church, was married in one of the church mother's uh, apartments. And he went immediately to Vietnam. But he left me with child. So while he's in Vietnam, I'm pregnant, comes back. What they didn't tell you during those days was that not only would you need counseling, but the soldiers would need counseling mm. because he had gone through some horrific stuff. But I didn't, I knew from nothing. To show you how naive I was, I wasn't even sure which end babies came out of. And that's the truth, as embarrassing as it is, that was the truth. I knew nothing. But when he came back, my daughter was almost three months old. And needless to say, I went through a lot of abuse. I wrote about it in the book Choices. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where it became just too physical. But during that time, the, during those five years, I'm thinking, well, you know, the church says that I cannot leave this man, that I have to do whatever he says do. The church says that if I leave this man, I'm going to hell. Everything what the church says, the church says, the church says. Mm -hmm until one day when the abuse became so bad that I decided, well, I'm just going to hell because I got to get out of here. And by that time I had three kids and I left. Long story short, that's when God really began to show me who he was because I moved into an apartment that I really could not afford. It was a place called Left Rack City in Queens, uh, New York. But I got a job with the New York City Transit Authority. So I was able to afford the apartment finally and a babysitter and you know take care of my kids. Now let's jump to the next part of my life, which I call God giving me the man that I was supposed to have. I had a friend, 16 years we were friends. We were closer than close. Loved my kids, took care of me and the kids, you know, the whole thing, you know how we go through it. And he loved God, but his job was to chase down terrorists. His job was to capture bank robbers. His job was always so dangerous that I couldn't get comfortable. But then he was a praying man. Mm -hmm. And when ultimately we did get married, 
uh, realized just how much of a prayer man he was. He could go out there and shoot somebody on a Friday night and be in that pulpit Sunday morning preaching. Mm. He did his job. He came home. The job did not come home with him. He loved God. He loved God. Moving on forward, he develops cancer. Now, I'll show you how crazy I was. When he was diagnosed with cancer, I had the nerve, the audacity to take a yellow sheet of paper and write out 10 names and read them off to God who I thought was more deserving of that cancer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, I did, I did it, I did it, I did it, but this man never uttered a complaint. They gave him 18 months to live. He lived seven years. He died in my arms and the scripture Psalms 37, 25 was the scripture, was the covenant that he made with God. I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the children break, beg bread. And he had me repeat that to make sure that I understood his covenant. Mm. Now, a couple of years prior to that, it was my turn to have cancer. So here we are. He has it. I have it. But because of the way he acted, because of his faith, because of the way I saw God work in his life, mm -hmm. when I was told I had cancer, I started laughing. They didn't know whether to send me to an oncologist or a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> because I knew either God was going to heal me or he wasn't. Mm -hmm. But then let me show you how God is such a show off. I mean, he really is. He's such a show off. When they went back over my records, they found that that cancer had been diagnosed in 1987, but because we moved, the hip center was never able to catch up with me. Mm. So that cancer <laughs> laid in me from 1987 to 2009 and did not spread. Now my husband had chemo, radiation, stem cell transplant, dialysis, I mean, he went through the whole gamut. I had one surgery, never took a pill, never took chemo, never took radiation. They gave me five years and I'm celebrating my 13th year next month. Amen. 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 So those are just a couple of things that have, I mean, I could go through a whole lot more. Uh, for instance, I was, in a new car, I, I wanted this car, had this car, brand new car, didn't even have 12,000 miles on it, and a truck slams into me on Central Avenue in Bushwick. I was so broken up that they had to put sandbags on top of me to hold me together. Mm. I had mm. bits of glass just sticking out of me. God healed me. Then I had uh, something called Hashimoto's. I had to have half my thyroid taken out. God kept me. This time last year, I was diagnosed with spinal uh, stenosis. They were talking about wheelchairs and, and canes. And I told them, look, first of all, I think I'm too cute for the wheelchair. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll deal with the cane if I have to. But I told God, I said, God, I know this is not you. This is nothing but the enemy. Mm -hmm. I'm walking fine. Did I go through some uh, procedures? Yes, I did. I had uh, what they call, where they stick the needle in your spine a few times. I went through all of that. But I'm not in a wheelchair, not using a cane. I'm not dancing like I used to, but I'm still praying <laughs> to God. So, when I look back over my life, I think about Paul. When Paul was on that ship and the ship began to fall apart, 
And when the captain said, okay, you know, we're going to have to leave. We're going to have to throw some stuff out. We're going to have to leave. Paul said, no, if you stay with me, you'll survive. Mm -hmm. That ship went 50 miles out of the way. I mean, it just went every place except it was supposed to go, but nobody perished. They all got to see, got to the shore of what I call broken pieces. So when I look back over my life, and I see the things that I've been through. I mean, I've been in a fire where to this day, I can still feel the heat. I can tell you everything about that fire. And yet, broken pieces, I made it to shore. Everything that I have been through, I can see it in Paul's trial, how he had to get to shore on little pieces of wood how my faith came in little pieces, mm -hmm. how I got to shore on those little pieces, those broken pieces, I got to shore. So now to get even crazier, I'm at the record, in, I'm in the record industry now. I left the transit authority, went into the record recording industry and I'm helping all these artists, you know, Joe, uh, LL Cool J, uh, Surface, uh, New Kids on the Block, you name it, I helped them. Then when it came my turn to produce an album, the Fuji's decided they didn't want to uh, do a video. So my album was shelved. Now I'm really upset because I no longer have that little 22 inch waist. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I didn't, I was older not what they were looking for. And I said, Lord, what am I going to do? And then to add insult to injury, they decide, well, the reason that we're going to uh, not release your album is because we have this girls group that we're going to put out. The name of the girls group, Destiny's Child. Mm. So the way I figured, y'all say, oh, it's me. <laughs> you owes me. So I'm sitting there, I'm saying, you know, Lord, what can I do? And I had another friend named LaJoyce Berkshire and she wrote the novel Soul Food. So mm -hmm. she said to me, she said, you know, you're always talking about these little funny stories that you write about this old church lady and whatnot. And I'm saying, who cares about this little old church lady that I had started writing about back in the seventies? She said, well, you know, just, just go ahead and finish writing those things, that, those stories and, you know, give you something to do while you're waiting to, to see what else you're going to do. So not knowing anything about the publishing industry, I took one little short story called Sister Betty, God's Calling You. Mm -hmm. And I had done some monologues, you know, and things like that. And the, the story, this short story was 22 pages. I had it, oh, here it is. Mm -hmm. It was 22 pages. I don't know if you could see this or not, but mm -hmm. probably, well, that's it. No, that's not it. That's the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> that's the wrong one. That's the next one. Um, I don't have the first one. But anyway, I did it on my computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, it was a little, you see, it doesn't even have a spine. Mm -hmm. All it has is the front <laughs> and the back. I had the audacity to take this little book to a bookstore. And when they got finished laughing, they said, no, you know, because you don't have a spine and it's on the spine of the book and it has to show the, the ISBN number and the title and the author. And, and I'm going, what? Because in the recording industry, if you have an album, you put out a single. So I'm thinking, okay, I got all these stories. So I'm gonna just put one little single out, just a little teaser. Well, I sent it to uh, my, my agent, my attorney, my entertainment attorney, sent it to somebody he knew at Time Warner Books. They loved it, but they didn't know what to do with it. So I said, you know what? I know that the recording industry can be sneaky, down low. Uh, they'll take your, your sanity, your vanity, <laughs> your life dreams, your hope, all of that. But I'm going to use all of that to put this book out. I, everything that I hated about the recording industry, but I learned anyhow, I used to put Sister Betty out. Mm. But I added one more ingredient. I prayed. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I said, now, Lord, they're saying that this is not what is supposed to happen in the recording industry. I mean, in the publishing industry. What am I supposed to do? God started showing me all the little steps to do. Okay, you create a website, you do a soap opera style uh, content, you do this, you do that, and you go back to performing. I don't want to perform. Go back, do your monologue. I don't want to do the monologue. I'm like a little kid and I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the church folks in front of them because they don't like me. Go back <laughs> and do the monologue. So I went back and I started doing monologues and then something happened. They started paying me. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> this might work after all. <laughs> So I took the money that I got from <laughs> performing and I started putting it into the books. Now, all of a sudden, people are interested in this church called the Ain't Nobody Right But Us or Others Going to Hell Church. Pastors <laughs> are not enough money. And I started getting little whispers online. Did you hear about, you know, I know this, I know this person. Mm -hmm. I know Mother Prayon. I know Sister Betty. I know Deacon Laid Hands. They knew, everybody knew somebody in that church. Mm -hmm. And that part I understood because I knew these people. The only thing I was trying to do was write it so that they didn't know that I was writing about them, which sometimes <laughs> did not work. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I started getting these phone calls from different uh, publishing companies. And I prayed again, I said, Lord, you tell me where to go. And God started putting people in place mm -hmm. because the book did not have a spine. It had to go in as a special order. Well, that we couldn't keep up with the special orders. Mm -hmm. So my entertainment attorney decided, okay, I am going to invest in your little book mm -hmm. and have it printed. I still didn't learn the, the lesson because I came out with a second little book, but <laughs> called Sister Connie Fuse makes a grave, uh, makes a grave mistake. Mm -hmm. At least I had a spine. Mm -hmm. I learned that much. <laughs> Long story short, I got picked up by Kensington Books who uh, created a new imprint called Daphina. But what I didn't know and they didn't know until Publishers Weekly uh, made the announcement, there had never been any books like mine before. Mm. There wasn't a genre for it. So in fact, the Sister Betty comedy books, gospel comedy books created a new genre of fiction, gospel comedy. So I'm saying, oh, okay, so what I do now, Lord? You perform, I don't want to perform. You got to perform. Yeah, I know they pay me, but I don't want to perform. Then I got an offer to do some performances on a cruise line. I said, oh, okay, that'll work. So I went on Carnival, performed, went on Royal Caribbean, performed, came back, and then uh, different companies were you know, asking me to perform, and I had to create a one-woman show because it's different mm -hmm. from doing a monologue. Mm -hmm. and doing a show mm -hmm. and then I had to get a band together and I mean it just became one big production and what I learned was if you do what God gives you with a little he will give you much that little 22 page story I said eh, you know nobody cared about that little church lady and then people started asking me well okay what made you decide to do the little church lady. And I thought about it and I said, well, when I was coming up in church, by that time, you know, mommy and daddy had gotten their act together and pastors and preachers. My mother was, of course, you know, Church of God in Christ and my father was Baptist and together to me, they were just hilarious. <laughs> so I said, okay, I got plenty of material. Then by, I would go to service Listen to a great sermon, but by the time I got to the front door to leave, somebody would say something crazy. I couldn't hit them, couldn't talk about them, couldn't tell them off the way, you know, I wanted to. 
And I started writing these monologues because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how are you sitting up here telling me that you love God, but you're being so mean and nasty to everybody else? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you, why are you <laughs> preaching a sermon instead of being a sermon? Mm -hmm. So I just started, you know, I, I changed the name to protect the guilty. <laughs> you know, there's not enough money. He can lay hands, uh, Bishop Bling Mo Bling. You know? mm -hmm. And I put them in situations that we would know as churchgoers. We would know, and people that didn't go to church would know. Mm -hmm. So at this point, after talking with Sister Outlaw, we came to the conclusion, maybe y'all need to see Sister Betty. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. 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 So that's, I see Pastor Brian. Now, let me tell y'all something about your Pastor Brian. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> your husband. Wait. Your husband. Uh -oh. I got to be careful what I put on Facebook. I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> because somebody would be all up in my business. <laughs> somebody would be all up in my business. Now, like I said, Sister Betty is this little old church lady who thinks she's God's right hand gal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, how he going to save the world if he don't use her? That's right. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and she's to the point where People think that if they don't want God to know something, they need to not let Sister Betty find out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how scared she got those folks, which secretly, uh, that's the way my mother had me for a while. You know, She was so saved and so much of God's gal that if I didn't want God to know something, I made sure my mama didn't find out. <laughs> but that's how scared she had me. So Sister Betty's hat, I realize we're on Zoom. It's got mm -hmm. the Bible and you know all the other things that we wear, mm -hmm. you know, to let people know how saved we are or how saved we think we are. Mm -hmm. And she's got her big cross. <laughs> she's got her big cross, and you know, um, saved like that. Mm -hmm. The story begins with Sister Betty receiving a phone call from Jesus. And she got so full of herself that she hung up before she found out what time Jesus was coming. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pick it up from where she decides that she needs to let her best friend Seal know mm -hmm. that she's so much saved that Jesus called her. Oh, while she was watching a soap opera. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to take you back to the day when Sister Betty decides to, to call her best friend, Seal, and let her know that Jesus called her. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Amen. Mr. Sunshine, you okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seal. Seal. Hey, girl, how you doing? It's Sister Betty. Girl, guess what? Now you can't tell nobody, all right? Jesus called me. He did so. What do you mean why he called me and not you? Didn't you miss last Mother's Day? Didn't you miss, didn't you, didn't you miss Easter Sunday? Well, that's why he didn't call you. Because I don't miss a service. My attendance is just spectacular. But anyway, listen, Seal, Seal, listen, can, can I talk? Can I talk, Seal? Okay, let me talk. Listen, I want to fix something for Jesus when he gets here. And supposedly, you know how to cook everything. So um, can you tell me how to fix manna? Huh? Manna, because that's what I want Jesus to eat. Manna, that's what he used to. You know, people used to that. Oh, you do know. Okay, so uh, so what I got to do? Some fat back, a red onion, uh -huh. a green onion, uh -huh. a bell pepper, uh -huh. 
And so what now? Castor oil. <laughs> oh, olive oil. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, well, well still, you sure that's right? Because, you know, I don't, I don't want Jesus to, to, to come here and eat and get all sick. And, he, you know, he, maybe he can't heal himself from stuff like that. Huh? Oh, still, guess what? Guess what? Guess who I was talking to earlier? Pastor Brian. Mm -hmm. You know, from that word of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Y'all seen him out there with him and Sister Brian? Mm -hmm. See, you remember that time when they got their lights turned off? Mm -hmm. Girl, that light bill was so high and so far behind it. They said they were going to come out and turn the street lights off in front of their house. Mm -hmm. But I don't need you to tell nobody because, you know, we, we saved. Mm. Oh, ho hold on, Sil. Somebody's on my. Well, I I'm trying to work for the Lord today. While you know, I'm waiting for where I come. Yeah. Hold on a moment, Sister Betty. Speaker, say it and pray it. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's wrong, young man? Huh? You, you, you got housing problems? Well, what's wrong? Oh, you live. You living with your mama? Okay, what well, is you paying rent? No. Well, is you paying utilities? No. Well, is you bringing any food into the house? No. <laughs> well, son, you're already homeless. Uh huh. <laughs> I know he did not hang up on me. <laughs> hey, Sil. Nah, one of them young men got some homeless problems or something. I don't know. Oh, Sil, guess what? Girl, don't you tell nobody. But I went to the hospital to see Sister Needmo. No, she didn't have another baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me and Sister Outlaw went to see her. Uh -huh. Yeah, we went up there to see her. But I told Sister Outlaw, I said, now look, we're going to go in here and pray with her. And Sister Outlaw wouldn't do it. She said, no, I'm going to pray at the door. So you know me still, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray with you, over you, behind your back, in front of you. I'm praying. So I go in there still, and I see that she's asleep. And somebody had put a little plant in a, in a, in a terrarium, a little, a little plastic thing. Uh huh. So there was some water on the desk. And I said, well, I'm going to water this plant. So see, I poured the water on the plant. All of a sudden, the plant goes, Wah! Wah! I didn't know that was her baby. Oh, see her. That was the ugliest little thing I've ever seen in my life. Looked like it had problems before it got here. Oh, uh huh. Oh, so hold, hold. I said, hold. You gonna let me talk or what? Hold on. Somebody, I'm on the prayer line today. Still, so hold on. Come on, say it and pray it. Sister Betty speaking. Oh, Sister Hellraiser, what? What you want? Girl, get out of here. What? Pastor Brian. <laughs> what Wednesday night test the lion service who oh sister Brian why you need her number why why what happened get out of here she said what now she accused you of trying to mess with pastor Brian uh -oh. <laughs> what happened what you say <laughs> Oh, no, I ain't telling her that. Well, no. Listen, Sister Hellraiser, you got to stop. How many times you going to jail? How many times you going to get your <laughs> lip busted? Hello? Hey, <laughs> Seal, <laughs> girl, listen, don't tell nobody, okay? But that was Sister I'm a Hellraiser. Mm-hmm. She said that Sister Brian got up at Wednesday night, test the line service, and accused her of trying to mess with Pastor Brian. That's what I said. Because I know good and well, as long as she's been messing with Pastor Brian, she ain't never called his house. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, sit, sit, sit. listen. So, we, me and Sister Outlaw, we out and about, right? And we see this homeless fella. Uh, girl, he stunk to high heavens. Ah, I couldn't <laughs> take it. I said, Sister Outlaw, you go pray with him because I, I can't do it. 
nah, he out there talking about, um, can, can you pray? Can you please pray? I said, no, can't do it. He said, well, I'm hungry. I said, well, here, I reached in my pocket, do him a couple of now laters, don't eat one now, save one for later. Uh, cause I'm saved like that. Oh, Snell, so, oh, oh, hold on, Snell. Look, I'm on the prayer line. I'm on the prayer line. You gonna let me talk? Huh? You gonna let me talk? All right, wait a minute. Ho hold on. Come on, say it in prayer. Sister Betty speaking. Sister Hellraiser, what you want now? What you mean? What you, huh? What, what you mean you calling me because I still owe some money down there on my Discover card? You know, ever since you got that telemarketing job, you've been trying to be a little ugly. <laughs> well, what you mean you can't treat me no different than the other people that owe money? <laughs> well, I can't treat you no different than the other people that call me about the money I owe. <laughs> hey, Seal. Nah, Sister Hellraiser again. You know, she's getting all uppy. Oh, Phil, so now this, so me and Sister Outlaw, we're going further down, okay? Uh, so we run into this, uh, how would I call it, uh, this lady of the night. Uh-huh. What do you mean, how I know? I know because I used to be, a, never mind how I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just know. Up there talking about, uh, I heard you, Sister Betty, you were the most saved person around here. I, I put my sunglasses on real quick. I said, oh, yeah, I, 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 I am. She said, well, can you pray with me? I said, oh, no. Still, I can't pray with no pot. I can't. No, I can't do it. What if they, no, still? I'm out of that line. No. So I left with the old Sister Outlaw, because you know, Sister Outlaw go to that church where they just pray with anybody. Mm-hmm. I left. <laughs> I went on about my business. Oh, I tell you, I, uh, I, I went to the Word of the Man Church. You know, they had me there as a guest. Yes. And, 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 and everybody got a little tired, including Pastor Brian. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I, I like the young man myself, but, you know, I have issues with him. Yeah. <laughs> Up there talking about how tired he was, so he was just gonna have us say a word and sing a song. <laughs> well, I can do that. So he says, um, "Blood." So we started singing, "There's nothing but the blood." He said, "I'm tired." Started singing, "I'm nowhere tired." <laughs> and he started singing about sex. I said, "What?" And girl, I busted out. I, oh, I came out of my shell with that one. Oh, precious memories. How they lit. Because it was about sex. I ain't dead. Huh? Never mind, Seal. You wouldn't understand. Listen, Seal, listen. I got to cut this short because, you know, you're talking a little bit too much for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, I told you Jesus coming. What you mean, am I ready? Of course I'm ready. See, I, I got my white picture of Jesus and my black picture of Jesus. I figure <laughs> when he get here, we'll work it out. Uh-huh. Well, still, listen, one more thing before I hang up. One of the reasons Jesus didn't call you is because you talk too much. Girl, ever since I got on this phone with you, you just been talk, 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 gossiping, talk, 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 talk. Shut your mouth. You talk too much. That's why I didn't call you. Oh, still, somebody's on the line. I got, I told them on the prayer line. So be quiet. Let God use you. <laughs> All right. Just <laughs> bad you speak. Say, hello? Say what now? I must be a bad connection. Uh, Jesus, this you? You say you say you tried to see me, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't see you. Look, Lord, you was that you was that child that was hungry, that I gave the now later to. Hmm. You was a homeless man. 
Mm-hmm. Like the 10 lepers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You was the process. Um, that lady that, that strolls around at night, that was you too? But, but, but Jesus, I, I've been going to church all these years. I, I, I didn't know that was you. I didn't know you wanted me to talk to them people. Lord Jesus, Jesus uh, hello? <laughs> I'm in trouble. That's just a little bit of Sister Betty. But um, the message is, cut it out, y'all. Stop being mm-hmm. so judgmental. Mm-hmm. If God wants to use you, let him use you. Because when mm-hmm. we came to him, we were filthy rags. Mm-hmm. And Pastor Brian, straighten up your life. Mm-hmm. Straighten up your life. So Sister Betty don't have to talk about you. <laughs> I thank you for your you know, one of the reasons why I now and have been over the last, I guess, almost 30 years of doing Sister Betty is because I learned from her. Mm-hmm. I don't always do the same routine. Mm-hmm. I let the Lord lead me. Mm-hmm. Cause I got bad memories, so you know that all that too. <laughs> but I find that what we needed in 2020, we now need something different in 2022. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This COVID situation, mm-hmm. and just so you know, I I had it and didn't know it. Mm-hmm. Had mm-hmm. no idea I had COVID. Triple vaxxed, all of that. Minding my business. Until I got a call from the doctor saying, did you know that you had COVID? No, I didn't know. I ain't felt nothing. Well, I did. So please be careful out there. Mm-hmm. I don't want this to be a public service announcement. Or anything, but if you're around me, wear your mask. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But I hope that you got something out of what I tried to present. And just understand this that when you have faith, at least to me, Mm -hmm. it means that I am unfazed by what I don't know. It also means that I use something called, what I call my God box. I don't know if you can see this or not. It's just Mm -hmm. a little little cash box with a key. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm concerned about, I write it out and I put it in this box. Mm -hmm. and I lock it and I do not unlock it to take it out and worry about it again because Mm -hmm. if I unlock it then I'm telling God that he's not big enough to handle it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once I put it in here this is where it stays Mm -hmm. once again I'm Pat J.R.J. Walker better known as Sister Betty and I thank you so much for having me this evening I pray that you got something out of this and to know that faith, faith is all we have because none of us have seen God. Amen. This is how we please him. That's right. By faith. And to the young lady, Sister Beltry, Beltry, I think her name was. Yes, Catherine. You made my heart glad. You have a book in you. Yes, I've been told. I you have a book that, in and you. I'm like, okay, how do I start this? Because I have no idea. I have. We, I we're going to talk. Hear. We're going to talk. Yes. We're going to talk. Because I Young lady, you have a book things. in you. And don't ever think that your story is not necessary. Mm. It is so much necessary. Mm-hmm. So much necessary. And you are walking proof mm-hmm. of what you let go and let God. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, without a doubt. Let go and let God. I, I'm, 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 I have chills just thinking about your testimony mm-hmm. because sometimes the whole thing. we have yes. doubts. Even you know, all of us. At some point in time, we get to a point where you know, I, I don't know. You know, you sure? But when you said that you got to that moment where you just had to give it to God and either it was going to work or was it? Mm-hmm. That was the sermon right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
that and was a sermon it. right there. I remember it. I remember it. I remember it. And I said, you know what? I, I've, I've been doing it my way. I've been doing it my way, and it hasn't worked. And I need to do it your way. And he does work. He mm-hmm. does work because that person I was with was a 25 year crack addict and he's no longer a crack mm. addict. Mm. He mm. got me in my darkness, in my grief and loss, in my desperation, in my deep depression, in my, there were days I spent just staring at the clouds because my depression was so bad. I didn't eat. I was hooked as a form of trying to cope with the pain I had because I was diagnosed with two chronic conditions back to back. And trying to cope with that kind of pain, the grief and loss, the uh, and loss after loss. I was- But you realize you had to do it, right? Yeah. It was in you. Process because that it was, was in me. you to succeed. Mm-hmm. It was- the, one thing I, I've learned, Whenever, whatever I've gone through, and I've gone through some stuff that I didn't even talk about tonight, mm-hmm. I no longer say, why me? Mm. Why not me? Mm. Why not me? I came through it. I did. I did. I came through it. Even with my cancer, I blogged every single day and laughed every single day. And only mm. to find out that there were so many other people that were going through the same thing, that because mm. I was laughing, they were able to laugh. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I've told many people my story and their question is always, how did you do it? And I said, but in the midst of the God, you did it. You did it. You did it. That's the message. Going. You did it. Mm-hmm. You did it. And Pat, the same message goes to you. Uh, this mm-hmm. Dr. V and Marie, we came in here to support you. Mm-hmm. Um, your testimony you have been such a great encourager to all of us oh that is yeah. dr vanessa howard yes ma'am <laughs> <laughs> and miss marie all the way from florida we are here supporting now oh, we're here my goodness <laughs> i'm glad i was on my best behavior <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> <a good> way. <laughs> Carol, caroline the two young yeah. ladies that you just heard speaking Yes. They had never written a book before and they wrote their memoirs and both of them became number one bestseller. Oh, we need to talk. Marie McKenzie and Dr. Vanessa Howard. Yes. I will be looking for all of you on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> we will be connecting. Please do. Please do because your story is phenomenal. Pastor mm-hmm. Bryant, you know, I love you, right? So, we, I mean, we still tight? <laughs> you, you know, you know, you my, yeah, my people. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> I'm like. And Sister Brian, so glad that you have a great sense of humor. <clears throat> Mr. Outlaws, Lady Sunshine, everybody, thank you so much. I've had a ball. Mm. And just, I, I'm full. I'm so full with the testimonies. And, and and just everything, everything. I pray you much success. I pray that whatever you put your hands to, that God blesses. Mm-hmm. Because what you're doing is needed. And you did not let COVID stop you. You're Zooming, Facebook, doing whatever you have to do. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. And also, Pastor Brian, uh, uh, Sister Outlaw. Yes, so ma'am. You better stay good to her because she really had to help me. <laughs> <laughs> she really, Sister Outlaw, that's true. Me and you, right? <laughs> the power Thank of you. faith. The power of faith. <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, we, we prayed and we let the Lord come in. Yes, ma'am. And yes. he put us together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he said, this is how it's going to be. I'm telling you, it, it, it was a struggle only because I made it a struggle. I made it a struggle. So even me, every once in a while, God had to sit me down and say, you know, what did I tell you to do? I didn't tell you to question me. I didn't tell you to look to no place else. I told you what to do. And every once in a while, he'll pop a tile and all and say, okay, look, I'm going to tell you one more time. 
this is what you got to do. This is how you got to do it. That process. Got to go through that process. So do I turn it back into your hands, Sister Alor? Yes, ma'am. I turn amen. it back. Amen. 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 Can we have a round of applause for all of our speakers? Uh, amen. 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 Um, I, 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 I want to thank um, Pastor Annie Lewis. Yes, amen. 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 If it wasn't for her testimony for her dad about her dad, mm -hmm. it, it, it just trickled us down to what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fanatic when it comes to paper. I got to have a script. I got to have a planogram, you know, everything has to be just so every, you know, we got to meet the marks, we, we got to stay on point. But you know, when um, God comes in, <laughs> when God comes in, yes, Lord. he takes full control, mm -hmm. yes. full control. The things that you thought you was going to say, he said, mm -mm, not now. I want you to say this. Mm -hmm. I want you to say that. But I, 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 I want to say um, thank you to Pastor Annie Lewis, to Sister Amen. Belfry, to Evangelist Cherry Outlaw, to Amen. Sister Pat G. J. O. George, Amen. to our own Pastor Bryant, to Sister Bridget, Amen. you know, to our First Lady, Amen. to all of our guests, to Evangelist um, Diane Hooks, Amen. Uh, to Pastor Shirley Holmes, Amen. you know, to Sister Wright for the music, you know, it, it, it was just more than I can explain. If, if you guys were in my house, I'm in my basement, this is in my office. Man. And if you all of you women and men were in my home right now, you will feel how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I feel so good right now that I just can't even explain it. You know, God is, is, is in my presence. I asked him to show up and show out today. He is here. Mm. He was on our line. Yes. He it, it is, was just so overwhelming. And um, as Pat said in her book with choices, when push comes to shove, mm. we push harder. Mm -hmm. When push comes to shove, we push harder. And when we push harder, we lean on Jesus. Mm -hmm. And as the pastor saying, you know, we've been saying, you know, we stay on that path. You know, we might fall here and there to the left, to the right, but we stay on that path. That's right. And as the pastor said Sunday, no more excuses. Mm -hmm. Amen. No more excuses. Amen. When the, the pastor asks you to do something, you just do it. When the evangelist asks you to do something, you just do it. When the leadership of the church asks you to do something, you just do it. Because we never know mm. who we're speaking to. Mm -hmm. As Sister Betty told us tonight, she threw off three or four people due to the fact she didn't want to be bothered with them. Mm -hmm. But not knowing in those shells, the Lord was speaking. Mm -hmm. So when we go and evangelize and go and talk to people and you're like, oh, I'm not talking to him. That's a bum. Oh, he smelled bad. Well, I don't want to deal with that lady. She got on high hip hop shirt. I know what she up to. No, I'm not dealing with those teenage kids and teenage boys. I know what they about. We never know. We never know. And I have had people come to me that I don't even know saying, you have to be in the church. There's something about the presence of you. I, I just see <laughs> something all over your face. You know, and I, I never be nasty. My husband is like, every time we go somewhere, somebody got to be talking to you about something, about something. I'm like, you know, hon, just give me a few minutes because, you know, I never know. Like I tell him, I never know. That could be the Lord mm. in somebody else's vessel mm. that wanted to give me a word, not for mm. me to give them a word because mm. we never know. We never know, you know, just like um, evangelist Sherry Outlaw. I mean, she sees stuff and knows stuff about this family before we even know. And she go and tell us, you think we listen? No. <laughs> and she's like, didn't I tell you? Didn't I just tell you what the Lord said? 
because he came to me, you know, and sometimes you have to take that. You have to take that because we never know who God is speaking to or speaking within that we have to take note to what he's saying. But, you know, I, I, I'm just, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, hallelujah. I am just so overwhelmed because we have been trying to do this for the longest. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed right now. I, my, my stomach is hurting me <laughs> for, for a couple of reasons. One <laughs> is because um, I'm hungry. We, 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 we just had smoothies all week. So we fasted mm -hmm. to make sure that the program went the way. And, and that's what God asked me to do to see if I will make a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to make those sacrifices. Amen. And then God will definitely show up and show out. Mm -hmm. And the other reason is, I, 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 you know, Sister Betty that got me so tickled up over here <laughs> that my stomach just hurts. <laughs> But I, I just want to say, um, I, I appreciate each and every one of you, but that this time I'm going to turn the service back over to Events Lady Sunshine for um, uh, thank you for the donations in advance, because we, we really, we really showed up and showed up. We laughed, we cried, you know, we, we, we sang, we praised the Lord. We did everything he had asked us to do. Amen. 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 amen amen we would like to again thank every single person on facebook and on your favorite social media on zoom every single one now and later who would sow a seed to the woman of god sowing on good ground that you would reap a harvest not only of what you think that you may need which is finances but that you've received the healing that's in the laughter, that's the gift of God through this woman of God. Yes, Lord. Thank each and every one of you. And again, you have there on your screen a QR code. You have a PayPal button. Oh, I should say, and you also have, for your convenience, a text to give. And again, you can always send in your wonderful donation to this ministry, to sowing a seed to Miss Pat George Walker. You can put that on the memo and you can send your donation to sow a seed at PO Box 320-391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. And we'd love to hear from you and your thoughts on this wonderful international speaker and woman of God. And we encourage each and every one of you, instead of turning on the TV, pick up a book. You won't regret it. It is healing, wholeness, absolutely wonderful. And there's these wonderful moments that you'll find yourself in the pages. And God will heal you of those things that you have petitioned him for. So we thank you once again from our family to yours for your wonderful giving. And at this time, we will have the benediction. Again, we're going to thank everyone who is here. We thank every guest speaker who has testified, has been an encouragement and support. And um, we're going to close this out in prayer before we give this to the hands of evangelists. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, God, I thank you. Thank I you. praise you. I give you all the glory, oh God, for all that has transpired and spoken today, for the encouragement and the support. And Father, we ask you to bless everyone on this line and those connected to us. We ask you, oh God, for each and every one of us to make a mess into a message, oh God. Father, do it all for your glory. And Father, that we may always be humble, God, to know the majesty and the grace that you have given us. And we can extend that compassion to others, oh God, and point them to the direction of you. Yes. Father, we ask you, oh God, for every petition represented here today and every note in the lock box. Father, we thank you in advance for being the answer. 
We thank you for bringing the people carrying the letters of answers. We thank you for taking care and providing in abundance. We thank you for moving the hearts of those to give generously that they too, as their hands is extended out, open that you will continue to pour into it that they would give out from the overflow. Yes. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We ask you, oh God, that as we leave one another, but never your sight, that you will continue to dominate in our minds, in our hearts, through the tongue, oh God, in kindness. Father, make us look every single day more like you. Yes, God. Yes. Lord God, your servant asked you one small petition. As Hezekiah faced the wall and asked you to extend his years so he can praise you. I ask you, oh God, that you would extend this woman, your servant, oh God, Pat Georgia Walker's years, oh God, yes, so God. that we can laugh, oh God, and praise you for the laughter and the healing inside the pages of the gift that you have gifted her, oh God that you would resurrect every single person in her life, oh God, from the past that she has sown into, oh God, with time and encouragement and so much more that's left unspoken and that they would sow back into her, oh God. Move the way you wanna move and let your perfect will be done in her life and through her life and through those, every single person represented here tonight. And those that are watching, oh God, and we forever will give you the glory, honor, and praise because only you are worthy of it, oh God. And we thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. We turn this over now to Evangelist Outlaw. Amen, 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 amen. amen. <laughs> At this time, I would like to have um, my pastor, Pastor Brian Bryant of Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries. Um, have some closing remarks. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, y'all. Amen. 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 Come on now. Amen. 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 Come on now. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. I, I, I done Amen. heard some stuff Jesus. today. Amen. 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 I done heard some movements. Amen. God bless you, Amen. Sister Caroline. God Amen. bless you, Pastor Annie Lewis. God bless you, Dr. Amen. Vanessa Howard. God bless you. Pastor Solomon, God bless you. And Pastor India Mills, God bless you. Each and every one of you, amen. Come on. Amen. Come on, I, I, I don't amen. know about you. I God amen. bless you, amen. Pastor amen. J. Walker. You know we, we like you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bother amen. you even more now. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. You know, I'm gonna be like amen. that little detective. I'm gonna be watching. <laughs> Glory amen. to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm very proud, amen, of the women of, of Word of the Lamb Ministries and how they put this together. I'm proud of all of the participants because each and every one of you, I could feel the anointing and the, the image. I could feel the strength, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, that we can move one more time. I'm, I'm looking upon the the, the titles of the, the power of faith and I'm looking at all these things and all I keep hearing is this one word don't quit mm -hmm. amen amen mm. amen I, 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 oh lord Jesus I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to preach <laughs> you know I hear you I hear you thank you lord uh, yes, yes God <laughs> thank you amen glory to God there's somebody out here. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's, 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 there's ministers, there's preachers, there's pastors on this line. Amen. Glory to God. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm just full. Amen. Amen. I'm full from, I'm full from the testimonies. Amen. That moved my soul. Yeah. Amen. I'm full from the singing. Amen. Move my soul. Amen. I moved from the words of wisdom from the woman of God. Amen. God bless you, Pat G.O.J. Walker. Amen. Glory to God. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> you know? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I can't say much more. I can't, I can't say much more. I would, uh, you know, God, Pastor Annie Lewis, God bless you. Bless you. I, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> and, 
and, and somebody who's an evangelist, I said it was an evangelist a while back. I ain't gonna say no name, but you know, glory to God. You know, amen. God bless you. You know, I love you too. Evangelist, <laughs> my two evangelist outlaws. <laughs> you know, amen. Glory to God. I'm very happy. I'm, 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 I'm very excited. Um, my wife is probably telling me I'm rambling. You know, she knows that I get excited about this particular time, and I, I'm not going to hold everybody up because I know, know some of y'all haven't ate yet. You know, you know. <laughs> That, that would include me, all, 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 all clergy members that's probably was on here probably haven't ate yet because, you know, we like to make sure the word, make sure the word is right, you know, except for that one person over there in the corner. Everybody that got their picture down is eating chicken. So I'm just saying, you know, amen, glory to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm very excited. Amen. My 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 other half, um, she's very excited. Amen. And she's saying, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. She's double duty. And today, you know, she's doing some things and working. And, and for y'all that don't know, Sister Outlaw, I love her. But you know, Deaconess Anita, that's my sister, my natural <laughs> sister. You know, Sister Bridget, that's my sister in law. <laughs> you know, you know. My my other sister uh, uh, out, is outlaw over there, a outlaw. <laughs> you know, I gotta have to s separate some names now. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. I want to say God bless you to Evangelist Hooks. Amen. Amen. That she wasn't feeling well, but she pressed through just to hear. Amen. 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 She got a amen. testimony too, y'all. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's amazing. I thank God for each and every one of you, and I appreciate you for all that you've done. I, I I can't say no more. I guess I'm gonna have to be quiet if I can't say no more, huh? <laughs> you know? Amen. Glory to God. Bless you, Evangelist Lady Sunshine. I appreciate you so much. Amen. Glory to God. Um, there's there's pastors on this line. You know, there's there's pastors on this line. Amen. There's 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 people of God upon this line, Amen. And I'm not I'm not going to um, be a missed, Amen. Without without at least asking them to at least uh, uh, give a word, if that wouldn't be all right with you, it's okay with you, Evangelist. I was looking at a uh, pastor, um, you know, I was looking at some pastors, and I'm, I'm, I'm well, you know, if they they had remarks, Amen, Amen. This would be a, a really good time, Amen. Glory to God, Hallelujah. Sister Caroline, just before I, I turn this back over to Evangelist Outlaw, I just want to know that I want to be the first person to buy your book. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. And I will be, I'm be the first in line. Amen. Glory to God. Because I want to, I want to hear that story. I know God is moving and he's moving wonderfully. Amen. Glory to God. I won't say anymore. I done said enough. I know y'all like yay. <laughs> you know, somebody like, oh God, that's all right. I'm gonna save the rest for it for Sunday. Make sure you're there Sunday. Hey, <laughs> hey, amen. 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 The truth is, there's healing and laughter. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Bible does say that there's healing and laughter. Yeah. You know, so I got some healing going on today. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Nah. Amen. I've been picked on by some people. <laughs> Pick on you. Tell me who they but, are. But, uh, <laughs> but, that, but that's all right. That's all right. I know who to call. <laughs> <laughs> I know who to call. I'm sorry. It's all right. No, uh, no it's all right. I'm talking about, I'm going to tell my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> amen but glory to god i love y'all um i'm turning this back over to you um evangelist outlaw amen to um feel free to do the thing um, pat goj why i can't say much if i could reach you here and just hug you you know, <laughs> you know i i just want to leave my hand here for you <laughs> you know <laughs> and it, i want to now i'm i want excuse me i want to talk directly to pat goj walker pat uh -oh. goj walker i love you so much 
I very much do. You, you, you're you like family to me from the moment that we first met. We met by uh, anybody who didn't know. We just met because I said, I wonder if the author will come on and speak to us. And she yes. came on and spoke to us and we turned it into a Holy Ghost good time. Yes, oh my did. God. <laughs> we, it's like our spirits just click, you know, and, and um, you know, she didn't even know. She didn't even know. I'm like that. I'm like that little paper boy that is asking for them two dollars that never get done. I'm gonna still stay there until I get it. You go. I'm a. I'm a be there. <laughs> you know. Amen. Glory to God. But I, I appreciate you, and we're gonna see you on the altar on Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, Pastor Bryant. Thank you. At this time, you are officially dismissed. And again, thank have you all. Have a blessed night. Thank have a blessed night. 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 Have a blessed have a night. night. I need thank you to have all Word of the Lamb members stay on, please. Amen. All Word Amen. of the Lamb members, please Amen. stay on. All of our guests, good night. Good night. Bye, good everyone. Night. Hey. Good night. Good night. Yeah, you bless need you. to stay on. God bless you. Who? Bridget needs to stay oh, on. Bridget. <laughs> that does not sound like Pat. I don't know. Uh, we, we, we'll be. Well, you can stay on. Pat, too, yeah, Pat, we'll be. We'll be, we'll be we'll, you look out. Look out for something from me. I'll be. I'm sent you pretty soon. All right. Okay. Before the night is through. Because you, you know, I I stick around to get some material for a book. So oh, well, you can come on, come on, come on now. I'm a good character. <laughs> oh, good night, everybody. Oh, good night. <laughs>